This conference will now be recorded. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, I'm Miss Hannah. If you haven't had the chance to go back and look at last week's video where I introduced myself and um, show everybody how to make a sketchbook for our Sketchbook Tuesdays classes, um, go ahead and pause this, hop back over to last week, um, go ahead and watch that, and then um, hop back over here when you're ready. Um, for those of you guys who already watched last week, I hope you have your sketchbooks ready and waiting, raring to go. Um, do you guys remember what the challenge was from last week? Do you remember? I said, my challenge for you is to decorate the front of your sketchbook. So I went ahead and took that challenge as well. And I drew, look at that. I drew a bluebird on my sketchbook. Do you guys remember that our, our themes for this week were gonna be crayons and birds? So here's my first attempt. I was just like, oh, what am I gonna do? I'll do a bluebird. Bluebirds are one of my favorite birds to look at out here. I love how fat and cheeky and fun they are. Oh, another cool thing about birds. I love that it's the male birds that are like the fancy, fun, colorful ones. I love that. I love that the females like are the camouflage ones and they hide in the bushes and take care of the nest and the eggs. And the males are like, give me hand fancy. I think that's great. All right. So we have um we have a couple of reasons why we're going to be using sketchbooks as our as our um our home for all our adventures this summer. And I wanted to talk about that first off really quick. Like why are we doing sketchbooks? And I think, I think for me, one of the most important things as an artist is, is having that like freedom of flexibility to play with and explore ideas. And when you have this sketchbook, it's a great place to jot down ideas, make something quick, make something maybe that doesn't look so great. Maybe, um, maybe it looks fantastic. Maybe it looks a little funny, right? It's a place to explore. It's a, it's a place to experiment. And um, and it's not something where you're trying to make like a finished piece of artwork, right? Like it's not something like at school where you um, where you worked for weeks and weeks in art class on like one um, project and then you got it done and you signed your name and you mounted it on some um, on some cardstock on some bright colored paper, right? And then you put it up in your school hallway or something like that. Those are fantastic fantastic pieces of art. But that's not what our goal is here. Our goal here in Sketchbook Tuesdays is just to explore and to play with ideas. And that's why we have our sketchbooks as our as our art playground. So here we go. All right. So crayons and birds, right? So look at this. This is all my kids' crayons that they have brought home from school for the past couple school years because we buy a new box, right? each fall. So this is, I don't know, this is a pretty good collection of crayons. And when I wanted to start drawing my birds, I just grabbed a good handful of them. And I just started drawing. I love drawing birds. I love drawing birds. I love like the sense of freedom that the birds have in flight. Um, I love that they're always on the move. I love that they have so much personality to them. Like, look at this fat, cheeky little guy. I, I just think that's fantastic. I love how bright they are. I love listening to bird song. I love just sitting out in my backyard and listening and watching the bird, listening to and watching the birds and trying to identify what I'm hearing and who is visiting. I even have some bird feeders out, of course. And um, I love watching the cardinals and the blue jays and in the wintertime we get juncos and woodpeckers and um i just think it's fantastic i have a lot of love for these creatures and i think a lot of artists do i think this is a very popular idea and theme to explore in artwork so i wanted to start off by talking about a couple of artists and how they've incorporated birds into their artwork and when i want to learn about stuff and kind of explore ideas, one of the first things that I turn to almost always is books. And when my kiddos were little, one of my favorite things to do was just go to the picture book section in the library and, and delve into the books. And I found some that I loved so much that I had to get them for our family. And I wanted to tell you about this one. Whoop, I gotta hold it straight. There we go. Heron and Turtle. It's by um, a Russian 
uh, artist and author named Valerie Gorbachev. And they used to have this at the library and I just looked and I don't think it's there anymore and I'm really sad. So if you're cool with exploring books, go see if you can find a copy of this somewhere. It's a really sweet story about these two friends that are so different. Tall, gangly heron and short turtle. And they have these differences and they have some challenges. Like sometimes it's hard for them to hang out together, but they always find a way to accommodate each other and to accept each other and to meet each other in the middle in a way that they can really, really love and enjoy. And I wanted to show you just one page of this. We were talking about birds and their personalities. And I just love how the artist captured this tall, gangly heron. And she just has so much life and vivacity with her big bow tie and her umbrella. And I love that these friends are so gentle with each other. I think that's a good message for everybody right now is how to embrace our differences and be super gentle and loving with each other. So here you go. Here's my first artist. Yes, picture book artists are fantastic artists. So here's my first artist that I wanted to show you about um, how he depicted this bird. All right. Another artist I wanted to tell you about is a British artist. Her name is Helen Ward. And I, I really love her art. It's so detailed. And I love, I love that about, about art. And I love that about looking at things and just finding all these little tiny details and patterns and colors that you can kind of capture and share in artwork. Um, and so in this one, she's got one of the fables. Do you know what a fable is? It's like a short story. Aesop's fables were about a bunch of animals and they got into these tiny kind of sticky situations um, because of some bad behavioral choices that they make. Um, and there's always a little lesson at the end, right? So let me see if I can get this up here so that you can see it. Where do I need to move it this way? Look at that. Look at that. This is a story about a jackdaw which is a type of blackbird. And she's not very fancy. And she's sad about that. And she wants to be a pretty, 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 shining, glorious, colorful bird. And so she borrows a whole bunch of other birds feathers and tucks them into her own, into her own body, into her own feathers and parades around and says, look at me, look at how gorgeous I am. Look at this. And, and you know what? the other birds figure out what's going on. And they're like, those are our feathers. And they steal them back from her. And she's left back just being herself, which is actually kind of okay, right? It's okay to be herself, but it's also okay to be fancy, right? It's, it takes all types, right? So I love this. Look at these details. I love the peacock feathers. I don't know if you can see it very well, but just all the details and the different kinds of feathers that she has here. I think it's fantastic. This is really one of my favorite things about art. It's being able to combine all those colors and, and the explosion of, of feathers and excitement and making something really wonderful. All right, so when I think about like making my own bird art, I, I kind of get stuck somewhere. And that is if I'm trying to um, draw something out of my own imagination, then I think it looks a little bit silly. I, I don't love my art when I'm just making something up. And that's like a personal thing too, right? That's another thing about art, right? Art is very personal, right? It's like, it's taking what each person sees and trying to share that with, with others, right? So the cool thing about art, right? So when I want to make art, I want to make art that, that really looks like something, right? And um, and that doesn't mean that like imaginary art is bad. Like I think of Phoenix as a fantastic, a fantastic idea. And I think there are some artists that can capture the idea of this flaming bird really, really, really well. And maybe if I keep practicing, maybe I could do that sort of thing too. But for me right now where I'm at as an artist, I like to, even if I have an idea, I like to look at something and say, there, that's something tangible, that I know what it looks like. And so a lot of artists, they use 
They use guides. They use pictures, right? They use something that'll hold their idea still for a little bit, and then they can use that as as a um, as a reference for what they want to do. And um, one of the great resources that I, oh my gosh have in my art studio is this book. Can you tell that I love nature, guys? I love nature. So this thing, this book. This thing is like massive. I can hardly hold it up. It's got pictures of like nearly every single living thing on earth in it. And if you want to look up, hey, what does something look like? You can look in here. So I'm going to flip in here to the bird section. Oh, wait, I think I lost the bird section. There it is. Here's my notebook. Here's my, I mean, my bookmark. Look, my son drew me a little cartoon. Oh, take a look at this. Birds. Look at that peacock. Look at those colors. So fantastic. And then look, here's an index with so many different families of birds. Oh my gosh, nature is amazing. And there's just so much out there to explore. I'm gonna flip over here to this page right here. I'm going to hold this up. Ugh. There's some familiar birds. Can you guys see? There's my little friend Bluebird. This isn't the Bluebird that I drew, but there he is hopping there. I see a robin down there. Do you see? Right down here. I'll wiggle my hand down there. Oh, there's a robin. So these are like all these different families of birds. And I can look at them and I can look at the coloring and I can look at the shapes. The bird shapes are hard, right? Birds are always in motion and it's so hard to know. How do I capture that? How does the head actually sit on the body? You know, how big or small is the beak? If I'm just kind of imagining a bird, I oh, I might not really know how to line things up. Here also, I want to show you, I want to show you these guys down here. Oh, wait, over there. You see, we got a cardinal. Everybody loves cardinals. And then this really colorful guy right here. This guy's called a painted bunting. A painted bunting. And we're going to come back to him in just a second. But I wanted to show you really quick what I did also draw on my sketchbook first. In my little sketchbook, I thought about a red winged blackbird that I saw sitting on a willow branch. And I thought about this red winged blackbird. I'm gonna make it big so you can see. See my red winged blackbird? And the thing that I did with this little guy is that I didn't wanna actually draw the bird. The same way with this one, where I like captured all the details of the feathers and the eye and how the wings were folding on themselves. And even like the grain of the wood, right? On the post that he's standing on. This one, the only detail that I wanted to really, oh, I don't even know where my camera is, that I really wanted to capture was his form, the outside shape of him. He was really dark, right? Just all black with one bright red spot on his wings. And I thought the other thing that was really neat was the shape around him. So when you're doing art and you're studying like a primary object, all that shape around it, we call that negative space. And sometimes that's the coolest thing to draw. So I focused on the area around this bird because there were so many neat little indentations and tucks and stuff. And I tried to make the bird actually kind of simple so that the shape of him could be the most important thing about it. And that bright red wing patch, right? So here's a little sketch. In crayon of a blackbird. So you could take your little sketchbook outside and even try and capture some of the birds that you see in your yard. All right, so I wanted to talk about one more artist, and his name was Charlie Harper. You guys might be familiar with him. He was an American artist and he was born in the 1920s and um, he passed away just a couple of years ago. And he did a lot of his art in the um, in the 50s and 60s and 70s. And he was really well known for making 
really kind of bold and simple shape drawings, not drawings, um, creations of his, of, of his subjects. And he loved birds. He studied birds a lot. He loved watching birds. He really knew a lot about birds. And um, so I don't have any big pieces of his artwork, but I do have, I do have a memory game that has cards with a lot of his art on it. And so I'm gonna hold these up, the camera, if I can remember how to find the camera, there it is. So do you see that? That's the painted bunting. That's the same bird that I showed you in that really big book. The blue head and the green shoulders and the bright red body. And I love how he was able to capture this bird in a really, really simple shape. So we're going to do a Charlie Harper um, art project really quick to end things off. i show you a couple more of these. Here's his cardinal. Nice, fat, happy cardinal. This guy has eaten a lot of black sunflower seeds, for sure. Let me tell you. Um, this is another one we see in our backyard a lot. It's the blue jay. You guys can see that one. So, so oh, a little bit more detailed. What else do I have in here? Oh, I'm getting them mixed up. Tropical bird, a toucan. Toucan. I love how much motion he gets in these. Here's a little hummingbird. If I was going to do a hummingbird, I would totally be doing like green and purple and amazing colors. He focused on how fast the wings are moving, right? That's kind of cool. Um, Great horned owl. Do you guys hear those out in your backyard in the woods sometimes maybe? Calling out. They eat, oh, you know these guys? You know what these guys eat? They eat skunks. That's one of their primary um, food sources. Their main part of their diet is skunks. And so great horned owls actually sometimes kind of stink like skunks because they eat skunks. All right, woodpeckers, do you see this? So no bird actually has like black and white stripes like that. I love that that's how he chose how to represent that black and white feathers. I love that this is what he saw and this is what he wanted to convey. So art, it's really fantastic. There's so many options, so many ways to do things and nothing's wrong and nothing's right. It's just playing, right? All right. So. I'm gonna go through here again, back to my trusty bird guide, because I'm indoors right now, sitting in front of my computer, making this video rather than being out there actually getting to look at the birds. I'm gonna find a bird here. I don't know. I was actually thinking, let's try this. So do you remember our little bluebird friend? Over here, right here. So I wanna look at this guy figure out how we could draw him with our crayons in a Charlie Harper sort of style, right? So I want to look at some shapes here. I want to see. I see there's like a diamond for his beak. I want to see there's kind of a red triangle right underneath his chin there, right? And his wings, his wings are kind of a triangle too, aren't they? His body, his belly is kind of an oval. And he's got that little pointy tail on there. So let's see if you can see my desk. Let's see if we can do this. Guys, this is trying out something new, right? Let's see if we can do this together. All right, I'm gonna use my big one. Big sketchbook for a big idea. All right, so I'm gonna look at my, I'm gonna look at my picture of my bluebird. And I'm gonna take a look at these shapes that I'm starting to see. And I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna start with the beak. I'm gonna make a diamond for my beak. With my crayons. All right, I got a beak down. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. Let's see, I need to move it this way. There we go. Okay, so I got a diamond for a beak. And then I'm seeing that triangle right underneath the chin. So I'm gonna try and fill that in too. And then what else do I see? 
oh, of course the bird's eye. They're so important, right? They've got those beautiful little bright eyes. My bird, where's his eyeball? And look at where his eyeball is. His eyeball's right down at the bottom of his beak. And I'm gonna do something with my eye. When I crayon it in, I actually put in the highlight right away so that there's something really bright and pretty in the eye so that it's got that light in there. All right, and then what's this thing? We've got like the oval of his head and it kind of comes down like this here. And then we got to figure out the wings, right? What did I say the wings were? Oh, wait, where's my camera? There it is. They're kind of a triangle. Kind of a triangle. So let me see if I can figure this out. They come underneath the red, under, and they go around, and then they go shooting back, and then they come back up. And I'm gonna connect it. I'm gonna connect it like that. All right, so now my bluebird, he's got a wing. All right, so what else do we need on this guy? Well, wait, there we go. I will figure this out eventually, guys. We got a white belly, we've got a little blue tail, right? So let's do our white belly first. And I'm gonna use red, but I'm not gonna color it in just to try and get that shape in there. So he goes down like this. And that's the rest of his belly. And then what else does he need to have? He needs to have his tail. And his tail comes down off of his wings, in kind of another triangle. And I'm gonna bring this back up, and connect it to the rest of his body, but there's some white in there too. So I'm gonna skip a little bit. And I'm gonna get, I'm on white paper, so I can't use a white crayon. So, I guess we'll try gray. We'll see what happens. I'm gonna put gray in there. Let's finish his body with a gray triangle. All right. So look, I just made a bluebird out of some triangles and shapes. And it's kind of a funky looking bluebird, isn't it? So there we go. I'm gonna color them in. We got crayons, right? Crayons are for coloring stuff in. I'm gonna color them in. That's another thing that Char Charlie Harper does, right? I can go back to my first one. He just has these big, bold areas of color, right? He's really focusing on those shapes, right? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna color this guy in. And I'm gonna color down here. And I'm gonna color underneath his chin, red, but his, but his breast, I'm not going to, I'm gonna color it like this, because it gets lighter as it goes down. And then it turns into gray, right? And now he's floating, it's a floating bluebird. So let's give him some little feet. Is it, he stands like this. And you can't see his other foot because he's standing on a branch. Should we give him a branch to stand on? Let's use the gray again. A little branch to stand on. Mr. Bluebird. And you know what his beak is? His beak is shiny and black. And it has a bug in it. I don't know. Should we put a bug in our beak? I don't know what color to use. How about a little orange bug? All right, here we go. We made a Charlie Harper bird pretty quickly together. 
So there's some ideas for you guys to explore as you're working with crayons and birds. All right. So for next week, do you guys remember our idea jars? Where we had one for art materials and one for a theme. All right, I'm gonna reach in here. And I'm gonna reach in here. All right. So for next week, we're gonna do we're gonna do folded paper as our material. Let's oh, see if I can get my fingers in here. And we're going to do pets. We're going to do pets in folded paper next week. Wait, wait, where's our camera? Over here. Pets in folded paper next week. All right. So I will see you then. Take care, guys. Stay well. Have fun.